Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. This video is proudly brought to you by the House of Cards, the official sponsor of my stream. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for all of your Flesh and Blood needs. Victor vs. Dromai is a heck of a matchup, and if both players understand their role in the game, it can be very swingy. Victor wants to play this matchup as aggressively as possible, trying to put Dromai into a corner where they're forced to start blocking and not set up dragons to further their board stay. Dromai wants to set up dragons while playing the value game over the first 8-10 to 10 turns, and then they really want to start playing to the board and trying to overwhelm Victor late in the game. Thanks for stopping by guys, I hope you enjoy the match. So we're playing against Dromai, and we chose to go first, so my first First indication here is that my opponent opened Seeker's Mittens and Snapdragon Scalers, which means we have a pretty, like, that mean we are in a way better spot against that deck than we ever will be against, um, against somebody who's running Mage Master Boots and, um, I, the legendary arm piece, Ghostly Touch. So anybody who's running Mage Master, um, Mage, Ma Mage Master Boots and, the uh, Ghostly Touch has a way better matchup into us and is way more prepared for us than the red line all attack action Dromai list. Now, they do get a pretty good chance to like opt one. They do put a card on top of their deck, pitching a snatch for second cycle. But we're just going to try to use Popper's block efficiently and then just block whenever we can here. I assume Tome of the Imperial Flame is the card they put on top of their deck. That's a pretty good one here. It is worth noting that Arcane Lantern gives us the ability to just like not be, just not die to Arcane Damage. We cannot be tumble tied and get like hurt in that direction. So we are able to like, you know, play a, um, to play a bit of like a longer game here if that's what the Dromai wants to do, which I, I don't think with this style list, that's what they'll want to do if I'm being honest, but I could be wrong. Um, so I mean, I think we're just looking at giving five here. Like, if they want to snap, that's fine with me. That's like a total win as far as I'm concerned. Sigil of Solace to put them to 43. Okay. I mean, that's fine. So, Surge Pops. I'm going to make a new Surge, and then I'm going to throw the Crush the Weak at them for seven. And I guess we'll arsenal the Blue Choke Slam because it can be played off of one card. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of arsenaling any of this stuff here, but I think it's better to arsenal something instead of just, you know, giving ourselves an intellect penalty for the turn. I think that's a better play here, so we'll just go ahead and make that decision. I mean, okay, sink below. I was like, they don't really, I mean, like, Billowing Mirage, like, is, like, one of the only cards that, like, Dromize are really playing that, like, even like prevent like that we can prevent them from playing with that attack but that's more of just a, a popper and it also plays into the idea of it also just plays into um um it's a popper that's just like a two card seven i mean like let's just block this efficiently give a popper here uh, or give a non-popper here, like just give a five here. If they throw the Asvali at us after this, like I'm gonna take two on this one. Like Ravenous Rabble is like one of those cards that like you hate to block. I'd much rather block a snatch or something, so I mean, okay, sure, that's fine. We're just gonna go ahead and kill it though. Um, so we're gonna make a surge, and then I'm gonna kill the passing mirage, and I'm gonna pitch the Macho Grande. And we're just gonna clear the board and keep playing our game here. Um, if there's a world where they attack with the Asvali, we're just going to give one card here, but they're not. So Buckling Blow is the worst of the cards here, so I'm just going to give Buckling Blow and Tectonic Plating. I was like, yeah, again, if they're willing to just pass, I'm just going to make a Surge and throw the Thunderquake here. That's perfectly fine with me. Another line I could have taken if they would have just left me with all my cards would have been to just block with, um, or to just throw the Choke Slam. And then heave the Thunderquake, which would have been really good. So, again, I'm going to block with the Debilitate here. I think that's perfectly fine. Our opponent's doing a good job of trying to, like, establish tempo early, but they've already used Seeker's Mitts and Snapdragon Scalers, which is great for us. Um, I don't even know. Like, I think we're just going to block six to block six. I don't really care about the damage necessarily like i don't really care about like them blowing up my arsenal but like 
I do want to like, I don't want to just take six early on in the game. Some damage has to leak from their attacks. We're not Oldham. So like they do leak over some damage during the course of the game. Uh-oh, here comes Caloria. They finally drew what appears to be a dragon hand. So they're just going to have to try and establish some board presence here. Okay. Deal. They're going to pitch a remembrance. Um, I am going to pitch a golden sun. And then we're going to throw... I'm sorry. We're going to throw the choke slam at the passing mirage. Mostly because I just want to get it out of my arsenal if I'm being honest. So I'm just going to throw that there. And then we're going to arsenal the rouse the ancients. And we drew a really not good hand at all. Like, this hand is, like, kind of terrifying. A Dominia could hurt us in a pretty bad way here. Um, double Pummel is tough because, like, that's, it's scary. We could block with a Pummel and a Balance of Justice since this is a Tome turn and then just go ahead and pop it. Like, let one of the Kyl Kylorias, actually, we just get to do this here, which is fantastic. This is phenomenal here for us. So we just get to block um, four. And then, like, we're just going to crack this and see what we draw. Um, I mean, I think we'd be silly not to give up the pulverize here. To just go ahead and pop this with the Pulverize, I think we would be silly not to. They don't get to make a copy of anything, so I think that's okay. So we're going to make a Surge, pitching the Pummel, and then I am going to kill one of the Calorias. The Caloria is one of the things I need to kill. We could have went to 30 to throw Command and Conquer Pummel right there, but I'm going to be honest, I really don't think it's worth it. Um, I think I'd rather just make the play I did. We are really not drawing uh, good Rouse the Ancients hands right now, like at all. This is tough. So let's see. We're going to give the Thunderquake. No, I'm sorry. We'll give the Command and Conquer, I guess, as a popper. Like, I'm pretty sure that doesn't have Dominate there, bud. So, like, that's just six, man. Like, that's fine with me, honestly. Um... I'm just going to give Thunderquake and Command and Conquer here. Yeah, like, I mean, this is fine. Like, honestly, like, we're setting up some pretty good second cycle hands. And we're also, like, trying to play our board clearing game right now. So we're going to go ahead and kill Kaloria. And now from here is where we're looking to play offense. Like, when we get past all of these attack actions and the snatches and all this other nonsense, we're really looking to try and play, like, right here. We would like to give um, we would like to give pulverize as a popper, and then we're going to throw seven go again at them. So, I mean, I think we're just going to take the arcane and the two physical here. Honestly, like I think that's perfectly fine, and we're just not going to block because this has no phantasm. And then we'll see what they do after this. They're going to play the Chromite Dust. I mean, I think that's a pretty good setup play for them. They had two Chromite Dusts. Interesting. Um, so we're going to throw... What are we going to do here? Let's just show them the Pulverize because that's more than enough to do what we want here. We're like getting into that weird part of the game where like that whole 33 blue counts just not quite high enough for what we want to accomplish. Okay. I mean, they have yet to take any damage, but like we're also up on cards. So like the fact that like they haven't taken any damage is really not that relevant to us. We're going to pitch this to make a surge and then I'm going to kill the mirror guy. We're going to play our board clearing part of the game here, trying to keep the relevant dragons clear. And we're just working towards setting up some offense here. We have a choke slam in hand, which means we can just go the 
we can just go the line of you know block with some cards pitch to pitch to keep cards in the deck and then give uh and then throw the choke slam here i'd really like to be able to pop with a thunderquake give the terra sunder mm, i mean this is actually a pretty sweet line i can give this final crush here to pop this and then i can play terra sunder and play the choke slam which is pretty good i mean we don't have a dragon we need to clear here so i think this is a better line of play for us and they're also not arsenaling a d react so three four five i mean which means this is looking pretty good for us to be able to do what we want to do here and like really like start to push some damage and start to swing tempo our direction here so it's taken us a minute. We have it has taken us a minute to get the ball rolling and to get where we want to be and really start establishing tempo and like putting ourselves on the front foot here. But we have now caught up on cards, which was ultimately our goal. We have now we're now up. Um, so let's see. They have 42, 45 cards and we have 48 cards, which means we're now up three cards and they loaded in like 68 or 70 cards against us when we loaded like 65, I think. So we're now like we've set up some good hands. We're playing into like we're playing we're playing our game now. This is where we want to be. Okay. All right. So the Terra Sunder is good. We get to deal six points here. And then Choke Slam was Dominite from the Terra Sunder. So we're gonna get some cards out of their hand. You love to see it. And we set up some poppers. Um, I mean, this hand's not great. Like. I mean, if we block with Spinal Crush again, we take one, pop with a Command and Conquer, throw the hammer, and then Arsenal the Zealous Belting. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is an okay line of play for us. I'm also going to save the Gauntlets and the Civic Steps for any time they like offer a Kyloria that does not have Phantasm, or if they decide to throw a... Um, or if they decide to throw like another snatch at us or anything that has like a relevant on hit that we want to stop. That's when I'm going to save my equipment for. <laughs> we did use our crown, our balance of justice pretty effectively. I feel like that was a pretty good use considering that we like most lists are going to be on Tome of the Imperial Flame against us. They take four, keep their hand to like really try and establish tempo, which I think is a good play. Um, depending on what they do here, yeah, this is great for us. So we get to just pop with the debilitate. That ends their turn. Since Thunk is six power, we get to throw the Rowl or the Zealous Belting at them with Go Again, and then we get to pitch our Boulder Drop to throw the debilitate at them. So this ends up being a 13 point aggressive turn cycle here against a deck that like they do have a lot of three blocks, but they're also playing Rabbles and like Snatches and Blaze Headlongs. Like they have a lot of two blocks as well. So we're really looking to like try and establish some like offensive pressure here. So we're up five points and we're attacking for eight. And the only thing they have left that they can really block with is Furnace. And they're going to try and keep that as long as they can. They want to keep that as long as possible. In forms of pit, in terms of pitch stack, we are going to go thunk and then the boulder drop. I think our opponent's debating on how they want to approach this because this just says your first attack, not your first attack action. So that would mean that their their dragon would actually have the minus two as well, which is pretty fantastic here. Because I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it works that way. I guess we're getting ready to find out. I guess we are getting ready to find out. Okay, so this hand's not great. Um, we can just block with the trounce here. I mean, it's only for one, but like the trounce isn't going to do anything, I don't think. Like, I think we're pretty safe to just go ahead and give this here. And then we can give the Thunderquake. For what it's worth, for anybody who doesn't know, you do not clash when it's an ally, specifically. Now, if they throw like a Blaze Headlong at us or a Snatch after this, it's going to feel pretty bad. Now, they did not, so we get rewarded. We're going to give the Thunderquake here to go ahead and pop this. On my turn, I'm going to pitch the Buckling Blow to kill the Chromai. 
Oh, they're going to play another Chromai. Interesting. Guess they're trying to, like, leave us with no poppers or something? I am confused. Oh, the Chromai had the extra action point here. So we are going to go ahead and kill this. And then at this point, even if we had a popper, we would take the damage just because we need to be able to kill the glass chromi there. So this is a good this is a good setup turn from our opponent where they're really trying to like push damage at us. Um I assume they're gonna throw the Yenderai next. That is the thing that makes the most sense in my head. Yeah, it's fine, but we're just we're taking it all here. So what it's three from the Asvali, three from the Yenderai, and one from the Uvia. So 29, 26, 25. So it's 25, 23. And I'm going to kill your Chroma here. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. He's debating if he wants to send the Uvi here. You absolutely do. You want to send the Uvi here every time. Like, there's no world you're not sending the Uvi right there. The only way we really could have been punished even harder is if they would have had something like a... Uh, is if they would have had, like, a snatch there to end the turn with. Because, again, like, I would have just given them the gauntlets and the civic steps there. It would have been a feels bad, but there's no way I'm ever giving up my last card. Killing the Chromai is priority number one unless I am literally going to die. Um, Yeah, we'll just give Terra Thunder here. That's fine. Like, we're getting a Pauper out of the deck. I like to keep E-Strike in the deck because it at least kills things. So... Um, I think this is fine. We'll just block six. They are playing Tumultai. Interesting. They are playing Tumultai. And we know they're on at least one copy of Remembrance. I'm curious to know if they are on more or if it's just the one. Um, we're just going to throw the hammer at them. I have absolutely no reason to... I uh, have absolutely no reason there to... Uh, kill anything else. The only thing that we would even consider killing is the Asvali. And with our Cane Lantern, I don't think that we need to kill it at this point in the game. I'm curious to see if they give us a D-React here or what they do. So they have 30, 34 cards, and then I have 37. So I'm currently up three cards in a world where they have at least one Remembrance. I imagine they might be on a second one, but I'm not sure. Um, one Remembrance puts them up two cards. So that would mean that 37, 34. So we're technically up one card that we are actively aware of at this point. Okay, two poppers in this hand. So, I mean, that's fine. Like, E-Strike is, like, unfortunately not a popper, but it has, like, a really good role into a lot of matchups. So I think it's a pretty important card to keep. Sigil of Solace puts them to 26. I'm pretty sure that's their second Sigil of Solace here. Um, burn them all. I'm going to pitch the Golden Sun here so that we have a popper to block to pitch that, um, to pitch to the Arcane, and then I'm going to give Spinal Crush here. And then I'm just going to throw seven at my opponent. They pitch an Uvia. Okay. Our opponent's done a very good job at controlling the board and playing um, and playing into like their role in this matchup, especially considering they are on snaps and um, seekers mitts. They've done a very good job. Like I, this has been a very good game so far. Like one that I could lose at this point in time. Now you guys did hear me talk about at the beginning of the match how like when they open mitts and snapdragons that like I am favored in this match, and I do think that's a true statement. But my opponent's playing really well right here. All right, they're going down to one Ash here, which is interesting. Will they flip an Ash into an Ash Wing here now that they've done that? Or is it just all attacks here? I mean, this could just be like, like attack into another attack. Um, This has no way to get go again, so we're just going to get both the Trounces here. Yep, pitch that last Sand Cover. Sure. We win the first one. Oh, what a good way to win that, too. Um, thankfully, we can use one of our Vigor tokens to actually uh, create a uh, create a uh, surge so that we're not forced to just actually lose the go-again value off of Zealous Belting. That would be a real feels bad for us 
if that was the case. So I am going to attack them for seven go again. And then we're going to swing the hammer at them. Two cards out of their hand. They take one and we're going to throw the hammer at them. Um, I, I'm not really like interested in using my gold here. I do not run test of strengths in this matchup. But I do run the Golden Sun as a popper, and if I have a gold and a surge with a Golden Sun, it can end the game. Like, it can absolutely win us the game and, like, actually end the game. Now, that's not guaranteed by any means, but it is something that can happen, so I do like to be aware of that as a possibility. I think we take the one Arcane. So if we take the Arcane, I can give my opponent Debilitate here. <laughs> We're going to throw, we're going to pop with a debilitate. The surge pops. We're going to throw debilitate at them. I'm sorry, wrong card. Um, we're going to throw debilitate at them and then arsenal the rouse the ancients because if we have a hand, like if they have to give two cards here, then we're looking at a hand that allows us to be able to give one card, take some more arcane damage, and then throw rouse the ancients at them, which is a very good swing for us as far as like tempo is concerned. Nice. And they gave us their last snatch. You love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. That is like a pretty good win for us right there. Now, granted, we have all of the equipment, so it's not like it really matters, but at the same time, it does feel good. <laughs> all right, there's that Tome of the Imperial Flame that they pitch stacked. Now, I don't know if they've shuffled at one point or not. They've played one Passing Mirage, right? Is that it? They've only played one Passing Mirage. Yeah, so there's, what, one Chromai left in the deck, two Mirror Guys, and there's that last Passing Mirage that we were just talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the um, Rouse the Ancients at our opponent here. Um, we're going to pitch a Macho Grande, and we're going to reveal these two guys. Right here. And we're going to go 7 go again. Going to get another D-React, I assume. Yep. I think that's the last Fate for Scene. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. With them having 16 cards left in deck, I think we're in a pretty good place right now. So I'm going to pitch Macho Grande. And then I'm going to swing the hammer at the Passing Mirage here. I think we're just going to pitch the boulder drop. I'm not a huge... I think I would rather have the disable in my arsenal. Um, I'm not a huge fan of arsenaling the boulder drop just in case we come along something better. We can probably work out a hand that will allow us to throw the disable. But I guess by that logic, like we should just arsenal the boulder drop because it's just the same. Okay. So now based off of this, we're definitely going to be throwing... Um, there's that remembrance again. Hmm... So I'm going to pitch a Golden Sun here. We're going to pop with a Buckling Blow. I do like killing Kaloria because the... Um, because the... Cal oh, it's another Remembrance. Okay, so they are on two. So they only have one more in the deck. Um, what are they going to get? Chromai, Chromai, Mira Guy. Okay, so they're trying to set up for their big turn here. So now at this point, it's basically like we've played the game in a way where we have seen zero copies of Chromite or Mirror Guy, if I'm pretty sure. I have to make sure here, looking at what they have. Yeah, I think that's... Unless we have something over here. No, that's pretty accurate. So we're going to pitch to make a Surge, and then I'm going to kill the Kyloria. Because the Kyloria can actually severely punish us if we leave it in play against a hand um, where they have like Miragai and a Chromai, and we need to kill multiple things. The Kyloria just becomes obnoxious. So getting it off the field is by far the best play here. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to just be able to keep this hand. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to. I do think I'm going to very strategically have to block with Pummel. And then I think we're going to have to give Zealous Belting to um, the Arcane. And then use Command and Conquer as a, po a popper. And then we're going to have to kill the Mirror Guy here. I think that's how this is going to have to be played this turn. 
We'll see how they play it out, though. So we will prevent the Arcane by giving Zealous Belting. We'll give the last Pummel here. Take one, go to 22. <laughs> this does have Phantasm. We're going to give the Command and Conquer. And now on our turn, we're going to kill the Mira guy, playing into, playing into what we want to be doing here. We do have two poppers, like, back-to-back -back on the bottom that do not work out for us, but... And we do have two poppers on the bottom that are, like, can be pretty bad for us, I feel like. We're also going to need to have a hand with, like, two or three poppers pretty much every hand for the rest of the game because we're going to need to be able to play around that chromite dust. Man, this would be an insane hand. If we were in a spot where we had tempo, knowing that that would have been coming up, that would have been such a good play to just be able to make a surge. But, like, they have so much of a board, and the way we play this matchup, the Pulverize really just serves as a popper. We don't ever really get to actually, like, throw the Pulverize. That is rarely to never actually done. Um, we are going to pitch the Macho Grande here for the Arcane. We're going to give the Pulverize as a popper. And without that ghostly touch, like, our opponent can't really scare us too much. Like, with no ghostly touch, like, we're not playing around, like, this crazy big endgame that they have. Even their, like, big endgame, like, in the Snapdragons version, still allows us to take, like, 10 health and be okay most of the time. So I'm going to make a surge. I'm going to throw the disable at my opponent and, like, just force some cards out of their hand here. Um, because we're currently, so we're currently at 22, 24 cards, and my opponent's at 13, 17. So we're up seven cards, plus they have a remembrance, which means we're up five cards, essentially. Now, it is five cards that are hard to deal with, so that is something to like that you also have to consider. This is an action, so they could actually shuffle the dust back in, which is kind of neat. I don't think they did. They banish it already? Is it over here? No, they pitched the other one, right? Yeah, they still have the other one in their deck, I think. I think that's what it is, yeah. I mean, we're we're like we're in a good spot, but we're not out of the woods yet. Our opponents played this very well. We could we could lose this game. Like, we have to play careful and like be be on top of what we're looking for here. Because we can lose this game. They're pitching a chrome eye. Interesting. So there's Arc there's two sources of arcane coming in. We're going to pitch the thunderquake here for both of them. We could block with the boulder drop here. Um I'm going to not block and take two here just in case they have another chrome eye and we need the extra popper. Okay, so we would have been okay if we just decided to take that route. Um but I am glad that we played a patient a more patient game right there. Make a surge and kill the mirror guy, putting two poppers back into the deck, and then we'll just arsenal the boulder drop, knowing that we can just keep one card in hand and clear our arsenal with the boulder drop if we need to. This is two non poppers, which is kind of tough. Like, that's not really where you want to be. Good news is that we just put three poppers on the bottom, or I'm sorry, two poppers in the bottom, I guess. So. All right, they have double chrome eye set up. They do have double chrome eye set up. But they have no mirror guys. Like, this is the last mirror guy. I guess they're just going to, like, try and remembrance them in. Is their plan here? So... So, I'm going to pitch... To the arcane. I mean, we could have tried to like go like dominate Golden Sun here, but like we just have to take a ton of damage, and there's no reason to do that here. I'm gonna give a Terra Sunder. We're gonna give a Cranial Crush as a popper. 
And then we're going to pitch the Rouse the Ancients to kill the mirror guy. Um, we actually just get to do this, make a surge, throw the boulder drop at the mirror guy. And then we get to arsenal the Rouse the Ancients, which means if we're able to keep a... Um, if we're able to keep a... So, yeah, this hand's actually crazy. We might take some damage this turn to just pop something. They're just swinging. Oh, they're playing Asval. I thought they were throwing the Asval at me. I was like, interesting. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is a great use of our equipment here. Like, we still have 20 equip, or I'm sorry, we still have 20 life and equipment. So, like, we're in a really good spot this game right now. They're going to activate Furnace. They have a Scar for a Scar, which um, is turned on. So they will have that when they, whenever they decide they want to throw it at us. This could not have worked out better for me because even though they are putting Remembrance into the, like their Remembrance back in, like I assume it's Mirror Guys here. Like I assume that's like it's Mirror Guys and like a Chromai. I think they gave us one Chromai right there. No, it was Mirror Guy, Mirror Guy, Kyloria. Okay. Um, I mean, this is a this is a really good hand, though. Do they have anything we need to kill? No. So we're going to reveal 16 and come in for 7. And then because of the surge, I'm going to throw choke slam at them as well. They give us a sink below. I assume that's their last sink below. They've played like they've played a lot of defense reactions here. So I'm going to assume at this point that was their last one. And we're putting two poppers together this way. We do have to worry about the dust of the chrome caverns here. We're going to have to use our equipment quite a bit here on that, on like one of their big turns. And we're just going to try to have to hang on here. Like if we can, if 20 life is enough to get us through those turns, then we're going to be okay. Like it's as simple as that, really. I mean, they give us a Tomotai realizing they'll never get to play it. I don't really know why they care about that crushing. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant, but... They pitch Chromai again. Um, let's pop this, keep our life up. We're going to make a surge and then hammer the Caloria because we have to clear it. Um, if they were at a place where like we could have like, you know, like taken three cards out of their hand, I might have tried to keep um, the Thunderquake there and tried to like make a play there, but I don't think that's where we want to be at. I think right now we're just living in a world where we're going to have to take some damage here to like really like close the game out. It's been a long game. It's been a grindy game. I think considering that our opponent is playing the um, red line version, like the the more aggro version of the list, like I think that um so again if i take three and go to 17 here i can pitch the golden sun to come in at five at them for five go again and then i can um hammer the mirror guy I have to go to 17 to do it, but I think that's okay. Maybe I'm supposed to give Civic Steps because, like, they have Miraging Metamorph. I, no, I don't think so. I think we're just supposed to go to 17 here. Save our equipment for something else. I mean, I guess we can always pop the Metamorph, but... I'm not a big fan of giving up a Golden Sun there, but I think it's the play that has to be made this turn. All right, so they have access to seven cards, and we have access to 16. So, I'm sorry, we're not going to make a Surge. We're going to throw five at our opponent with Go Again here because we're pitching the Golden Sun. So it's five at them with Go Again. They're going to give us a card, which is ultimately what we want. 
And then we're going to kill the mirror guy here with our choke slam, throwing the hammer at him. And we have a boulder drop in Arsenal, which is cool, but like at the same time, like it's fine. It is what it is. Um, all right, here we go. Quad popper is exactly what we want to see. There's going to be a hand that only has two, but I mean, you're coming up on your turn here. We're like, I mean, you have to, you have to be trying to play. Like, are they trying to set up like triple chromi? Um, I am going to pitch a blue to prevent the arcane. We're going to take the two physical here. Go to 15. Okay. We'll just go ahead and give four here to stay at 15. Using that scar for a scar, they're going to throw a dragon at us. We're going to give the cranial crush here as a popper. It's like when they throw this, we're going to give the Cranial Crush. And then again, our turn is going to be hammering the Mirror Guy here. And I, I, I don't know what their plan is here. Like, they don't have enough Ash to even really, like, try to kill me from here. I mean, like, I guess, like, if you play Chromai and then pitch a red, like... Or I guess they have the dust, so it doesn't matter. They don't need to be able to do that. Um, I mean, yeah, I think we're just blocking three. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I think we're taking three and going to 12 here. Like, they're just going to get to get the action points, and we're going to have to use our poppers to kill everything we can. I don't know, they might get us here. Like, this might have been enough for them to have set it up. We get to pop this one. Gosh, how do they still have three action points? That's crazy. I mean... Are we dead here? So if I take the Ash Wings, I go to seven. I mean, to stop their action points, I have to give all three poppers, which means next turn. Well, they just keep their action points next turn. Because they have a they have a Miraging Metamorph and a Sand Cover in their hand. Right? So I'm just supposed to pop everything here? I guess they're wanting to undo some stuff here? I don't know. Yep, that's fine. I may have severely miscounted here. I don't know. Like, they'll throw Yindirai at us. That was a mistake. I'm pretty sure that was a mistake. Actually, is there a world where I can just take five and go to four? And kill one of the Chrome Eyes? I think them throwing the Miraging Metamorph was actually a mistake. Yeah, because now we get to give them a Quicken Token, which doesn't matter because all they have is Sand Cover left. So we're at four. They no longer have action point. They do not have an action point, and we're going to hammer one of the chrome eyes down. Yeah, I think... Yeah, my opponent just said whoops. I think they just recognized their mistake there. And now, when they attack with the chrome eye... 
They're going to attack with the Chromai because it's, I mean, they could play the Sand Cover to give things go again here. But we still have Quad Poppers, so it doesn't matter. So now we give the Civic Steps, take two, go to two. On the Asvali, we're going to pitch to Macho Grande because we want to keep that in our deck here. And we're going to go ahead and give a Disable. When they throw this Asvali, this is their last action point. We're going to block the Arcane with our one floating. And then we're going to give Thunderquake here. Pop this in their turn. And then from here, we're going to throw the hammer at the Chromai. <laughs> and now it doesn't matter what they do. Um, yeah, so... This is 10, so it's more, so we should just throw the Golden Sun here. And yeah, let's target the gold. So we'll come in for 10 overpower and they're just going to concede because they realize they made a mistake. For what it's worth, I do think we were going to lose that game though. Anytime my opponent opens Snapdragon Scalers and Seeker's Mitts, I automatically feel better about this matchup because that means my opponent isn't trying to play into using Mage Master Boots to put Passing Mirage into play and killing me with a Ghostly Touch when I'm already at a low life. To my opponent's credit though, they did play the game really well. They came out swinging on all forces at the beginning of the game. They never gave me a point to like really establish tempo and start throwing attacks at them and really kept me on the back foot early. So well played by my opponent to start the game. Now, as the game kept progressing, there were a couple of times I was able to use one popper, throw a rouse or a zealous and then follow up with another attack and really start to try to put my foot on the gas. But my opponent did a great job of reeling the game in every single time it happened. So after a few turns, I realized that this game was probably going to come down to fatigue since they weren't weren't on the crazy kill you out of nowhere in game plan. Towards the very end of the game, my opponent made the decision to pitch the sand cover to throw Miraging Metamorph at me instead of just continuing to throw their dragons at me. Now, I know that it would have ended their turn if they'd have thrown another dragon at me, but if I don't take the damage to kill one of the Chromies with my blue in hand, I'm then in a spot where I have two Chromies in play that I can't pop because of the dust. So I think my opponent's mistake with the Miraging Metamorph actually cost them that game because I'm pretty sure I was going to lose due to the fact that I wasn't going to be able to clear the board and pop with everything I needed to. My opponent played really well and put me in the spot they wanted me in, but I think they just made a blunder at the end of the game and it gave me the opportunity to win it all. If you see anything you think I could have done differently, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.